Hi guys. Um, today here I opened up the website of the University of Southern California. Uh, the page is the translation of Sahih Bukhari book 54. And up the top here, up at the top, you can see that uh, the web address, so that you can check it out yourself. Uh, we want you to know that this is a Muslim website and not a Christian website. So we take our information from uh, the Muslim sources. Anyway, uh, welcome again to um, Muhammad Hadith Part 3, uh, where we are going to continue to expose Muhammad for uh, who he really was. Because what he taught and believed in will give us a clear idea whether we can believe him for anything else he says. And uh, let me remind you from Matthew 7, 15 and 16, we read, Watch out for false prophets, for they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. So let's scroll down and see if we can recommend <laughs> recognize Muhammad uh, for some of the things that uh, he believed in and uh, talked about. And so I'll go down to 522. Okay. There we are. This is one of my favorite hadiths. I, I'm not sure which is my favorite because it just changes all the time. As long as I'm laughing, then it's my favorite. <laughs> okay, so we, here we have uh, Sahih Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 54, Number 522. The Prophet said, when you hear the, the crowing of cocks, ask for Allah's blessing, for the crowing indicates that they have seen an angel. And when you hear the brain of donkeys, seek refuge with Allah from Satan, for their brain indicates that they have seen a Satan. <laughs> Guys, do you believe it? Is there anyone here that believes this stuff? Because we see it as pure superstition or perhaps even witchcraft. You know, I think it's interesting to note here in this hadith that Muhammad, uh, is trying to make a comparison uh, using barnyard animals. For, inst for example, he's taking the crowing of roosters, which are traditionally known as a, a good morning wake-up call, you know, to start your day, um, and relating that to angels, you know, something nice. You wake up with the angels. <laughs> Versus um, the brain of donkeys who hold, you know, a rough and, you know, scratchy, deep, um, rather unpleasant um, brain. And he's associating that with darkness and evil and Satan. Just something to think about. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, I wanted to say that. Muslims uh, in many countries are, are coming from second and third world nations and uh, they don't have literacy. So they take most of their learning from the mosque. When they go to the mosque, it's the mosque leader that's telling them about Islam. Never are you going to find mosque leaders that are going to show them hadith like this. But I strongly believe that Muslims, when they get literacy in these uh, other nations, they're going to run from Islam when they read things like this themselves. You know, even today when we show Muslims these hadiths and we talk about them, they call us liars. They tell us that we're lying. You're lying, they say. And then we show them the hadith. Their hadith. So unfortunately, many Muslims, whether they're Western Muslims or Middle East Muslims, they don't know about these hadiths, or they don't want to talk about them. And you know, that's another subject, the ones that don't want to talk about them. For example, I've had many Muslims come and say to me over these years, how can I take these hadiths to my parents? How can I talk to my dad about something like this? And I'll, I'll sympathize with them because how does a Muslim go to his parent and say, you know, Dad, I, I, got, I got some things on my mind. I, I don't understand what Muhammad was saying about some of these hadiths here. And the father, he shuts them down. 
and he says, Allah knows best. And the poor kid, he goes to his mother, and his mother says the same thing. Allah knows best. Don't ask questions. Because the Quran tells them, don't ask questions. And I feel also sorry for the parents of these these kids because they're stuck in a catch-22 kind of situation because they themselves have come from parents and grandparents who have taught and believed the same things. Believe that Islam is the, the truth. So when confronted with these weird and crazy superstitions, it scares them. <laughs> of course it scares them. Because it would turn their world upside down if they're going to contemplate them for any length of time. It's easier to whitewash something and let it slip from your mind than to think on something and let it bother you more and more until it eats at you. Right, guys? We all know what that means. So I, I feel sorry for, for everyone uh, in Muslim societies because they are they're, they're like in a jail. They're in darkness. And the only way to escape is through courage and being very brave, which unfortunately we don't see happening too much when it has to do with religion. Anyway, we're looking for some very smart um, uh, Muslims, someone who can debate us. We want to hear from some scholars, mosque leaders, someone that has the authority to speak on the Quran so that we can have live debate. So we welcome that because we want to tape it, we want to record it, and we want to post it. So is there any Muslims out there? Or do you know any Muslims that have the smarts enough to debate us? Because this is an open challenge for anyone that feels they have the ability. Anyway, I guess I'm going to go now. That's it until we have the next hadith uh, that exposes Muhammad. Remember that by their fruit we will recognize them according to Matthew 7, 15 and 16. And so I want to tell everyone, God bless you all in Jesus' holy, holy name. Until next time. So, bye-bye.